What's up guys, welcome back to another Profound Studios tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to achieve professional sounding tech house drums and the three techniques that I use to do this. Now there's more to it than just slapping some samples underneath your kick and bass line. However, once I show you guys how to do it, it's actually quite simple and there's not a lot to it but the results are quite substantial so uh, let's dive into my FL studio and get straight into it. Now before we get stuck into the tutorial, if you can please just drop a like and a subscribe below it helps out the channel so much and it's the most free ways to support the channel and I really appreciate it. Alright let's go. Okay so here we are inside my FL studio now I've prepared just a quick little loop uh, for the purpose of this tutorial let's just have a quick listen to this. As you can hear I've done this very basic processing to my kick and bass line but the drums I have not touched at all apart from just adjusting the volume. So as you can hear it's not sounding too clean right now, but we're going to fix that. So first things first, let's just go through the elements that I have. Okay, we've got a closed hat, an open hat, we have a clap, and then we have a little closed hat sort of shaker happening. Now the thing I want to first go over is the little hat shaker groove we got going. Let's just listen to that on its own. Now it's very, see how there's not a lot happening? It's just very kind of stagnant, um, not very groovy at all, not very, it's just, yeah, it's just literally just hat slapped in and that's not what you want. So what we can do to make it a bit more, give it a bit more swing, a bit more groove, see the velocity down here? We can sort of play with these and make it more, make the shaker more kind of lifelike. So what we're gonna do, let's just drag this up a bit so we can see better. All right, so let's just play around. So maybe we want the first one to maybe be a bit quieter and then it goes up and down. Kind of, let's see how this sounds. Something, something like that. See straight away, it's kind of like, it's, um. How do I describe it? It's more, it's not as harsh, I guess. It has more groove to it by adjusting the velocity of that first, third, fifth, you know. It's, um, gives it a lot more groove, more swing. It's more lifelike. And it's also, it doesn't interfere with uh, the kick as much. Whoops. Let's go back there. And there's, Plenty of other ways to do this as well. Okay. Now let's just, we're going to delete these. We're going to copy and paste this. Whoops. And we're going to listen to the difference. All right. So let's listen to the. You hear the difference? See how it's more groovy here and then here it's just like really in your face and harsh as opposed to this it's much better okay so and there's many ways you can play around with this you don't just have to have let's just give this a quick play so that just straight away sounds better without even any EQ or nothing but there's other whoops did not mean to do that all right so there's other ways you can do this though so we don't have to just go that groove. We can go, for example, let's get rid of the kick. When you make a drum loop without the kick, it gives you more options. It kind of, because you're not worrying about the kick, you can create some really cool sort of grooves. So let's just delete this. And maybe we want to go, where are we? Piano roll. Maybe we want to go something like, That's a that's cool little groove. Alright, let's go with that. See how that sounds. Yeah, I like that, I like that. 
Let's just listen to the drums on their own. Yeah, let's go with that. And then from here, we can also just kind of adjust the velocity here and there. You know, maybe maybe we want loud, quiet, quiet, loud, maybe, you know? Just kind of play around. Just kind of make it more lifelike is the, one of the points I'm trying to get across. Let's delete that. I'm gonna copy that. Yep, cool. All right, I like that, I like that. Okay, now, next. All right, let's just put the kick in again so you guys can hear the full, the full vibe. Now, secondly, as you can hear, everything is straight down the middle of the mix right now. And that's not really what you want with your drums. You kind of want to add more width so and give your kick and bass more space. So what we're going to do is, first things first, we're going to close an open hat here, which kind of just makes one hat really. Let's just listen to these two. Now what I like to do is I'll pan one of them left. Not all the way left, just a little bit, we'll go 30%. One of them right. And straight away, as you can hear, it's made the hats a bit wider. Which is definitely what you want. And then from here, we can also, with our clap, let's listen to our clap on its own. Now, it is a nice it is a nice clap, but we can do a little bit more to it to add a bit more width. Let's get up our where's our delay? Delay. Alright, that's not what we want. Let's go just a just a tiny bit. So that's made it a bit wider with the delay. Let's listen to it with it. Let's go back. About, let's bring the volume to about 30%. That's without the delay. Now this will be with the delay. It's a very minimal difference, but it does make a difference. And when you're doing this to, you know, maybe 10 drum sounds in your track, when it's Obviously, your track's going to have more than just these simple layers. It makes doing these little touches to each sound makes a huge difference to making your track more wide, more, or the, the drums more wide, sorry. And it gives the kick and bass and the leads, the, the sounds that you want in the center of your mix, it gives them more room. So it's definitely something to consider. You don't always have to do this, but little touches like this. And you can play around with it as well. Maybe you want a little bit less. But yeah, it definitely helps. It helps open up the mix and it adds width. So let's just, um, from here, let's go to our final step, which I'm not going to go and EQ everything because, um, you know, I'm just talking about um, techniques for a more professional sound, I'm assuming for this tutorial, I'm assuming that you guys will know basic EQ and things like that. I'm just showing some more steps that maybe you haven't necessarily considered. So um, now let's go to our final step, as I was just saying, which we're going to create a drum bus. And then we're going to add, so let's just select all of these. And we're going to add, we're going to send them to say just any track, we'll name this drum bus uh, let's give it a cool color pink will do and we're going to go to our drum bus and we're first, right, so we're going to get up uh, first our plugin fresh air okay 
Now, let's just listen. Let's solo out our drums. Alright, now, Fresh Air basically is an exciter plugin and adds a bit more, I guess, as the plugin suggests, excitement, um, a little bit more. A little bit more width, a little bit more extra thickness, um, kind of just boosts um, the high end slightly and the mids as well. As as you can see here, we got mid air and high air. Okay, so let's just play with this. I haven't actually played with this plugin too much myself, as I just discovered it recently. All right, so. You can hear the excitement slightly. You want to be careful though because when you increase it a little bit, you kind of think, oh, that sounds good, and then you want to increase it more and more, and that's not really what you want. And the knobs here tell you what the plugin itself does. It says this one, add high mid presence, this one, add high sparkle. So you can either, you don't have to make a drum bus for this, you can just put it on each individual sample but it's really up to you how to do it I just wanted to for the purpose of this tutorial show it in a drum bus now secondly uh, let's just... now secondly we want to go to our compressor okay so for our compressor we're going to be using the glue compressor which does as the name suggests it's called the glue so we've got this on our drum bus now we're going to go through these settings so we have our Peak, <clears throat> peak clip on, I have a ratio at 2, <clears throat> pardon me, sorry, our release at 1, our attack we're going to have here at 3, uh, and then we're going to have our mix at 40% roughly, sorry I just had this written down because I planned this last night for you guys, we're going to have our mix at about 40%, now let's see how this sounds so far. Okay, 40%, we're going to have our attack at 3, yep, we've got our threshold at 14.2, 14.2, and we're going to have our makeup at 4 decibels. And really that's just kind of gluing the sounds together so then they're, they're not all I suppose one's more one sounds like peaking more than another or whatever it's kind of just gluing it all together um, it's a really useful plugin it does cost about um, I think it's like $99 that might be US dollars too by the way but um, yeah and there's also presets um, you know from mastering to side chain you know you got S yeah these a really cool uh, presets to play with um, and it, I know it is a quite an expensive plugin but it's probably probably the best plugin I've found compressor wise um, the stock FL ones are good like the limiter like that's pretty good for a free plugin and then there's OTT as well but um, in terms of gluing tracks together uh, the glue compressor is probably uh, the go-to I would say and um, yeah so now let's listen to the final result here let's just Make sure we got everything in check. It certainly sounds much better as opposed to turning everything off. Um. So without all of that, it sounds a lot more dull. There's no width, it's all just cluttered in the center. And um, that's not what you want for your kick and bass lines, so. Alrighty, so that'll about wrap it up for this tutorial. Uh, I hope it helps you guys uh, in your future productions. If it did help, if you did find this useful, please do 
again drop a like drop a subscribe let me know your thoughts in the comments as well uh, we've, I'm currently working on our uh, next line of sample packs and preset packs uh, they'll be out hopefully within the next few weeks I'm just um, trying to finish them off make sure they're as good as possible for you guys and um, yeah that'll that's it for today so um, I'll see you guys next week and um, yeah cheers <laughs>